Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. This is episode 254, recording on uh, Thursday night, as always, 8th of September 2011. Welcome, everyone, on the podcast. Welcome, everyone, in the lounge. And also a big welcome to Eric and Will. How are you going, boys? Hello, hello, hello. And hello, everyone. Hello, all. And uh, also we've got another special guest in the studio tonight, and it's Garth. How you doing, Garth? G'day, Glenn. How you going? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Now, Garth's obviously local. <laughs> he hasn't just walked up from <laughs> Melbourne or anything like that. So um, just, just walking off the street, did you, Garth? Yeah. He's a border. Yeah. That's right. I saw the light on, and he thought he'd come in and have a bit of a chat. That's right. But no, those Garth comes around. He's called into, into the show a few times from the lounge, so uh, we welcome him with open arms. Uh, we, he's uh, going to stick with us tonight. Unfortunately, I didn't have a time to put a video on him, but, uh, you know, them's the breaks. Them's the, you can picture him. Hang on. You didn't have time? Well, you couldn't be bothered. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I, you know, I didn't want to inflict same. my or, or, hideousness <laughs> on, the, on the crew. Or C, all of the above. Okay, so... <laughs> So, so uh, let, let's go. So, yes, from the lounge, you can call in. If you're going to listen to us live, you can call in on Skype, Aussie Techhead, call in, have a yak. Tell us what's on your mind, world. Uh, you can email us. Email Glenn, Eric or Will at aussietechheads.com.au. You can tune in audio only. Go, well, you can't go to the website because it's still down. But, um, uh, look, if you want to know how to do the audio only, give me your, give me your email and I'll tell you how to do that. So you can do that on your iPad or your Android uh, while you're out and about. Save some bandwidth, just audio. Uh, live video on YouTube every week. The show goes up on YouTube, so whoopee. And also, what else we got? Oh, we, we want to say, want to say first of all, hello, Daniel from London. He sent me a Skype request and we thought, it's just great to hear, hear that people all around the world are listening and maybe watching. We don't know. No one's actually said that they watch the YouTube, but how about we get some views up on YouTube? Uh, but yeah, yes. Daniel, Daniel from London, welcome. And I'm sure there's other people around the world because we just Eric and I checked out some stats this afternoon, <laughs> and there was quite a spread, Eric, from yep. Yep. from around. I don't know. There was obviously Australia was the biggest, America, England, oh, Ukraine. I think was there. <laughs> there a I've got a couple. I've got a few from Estonia and Greece. Quite a few nice. from the UK and Spain. Nice. From, for chewing the fat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. So thanks everyone that I tuned. can't understand a word I'm saying, but what the hell? <laughs> 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 but they can watch. That's they right. Watch. But that's the right. Ukraine, they're probably all um, bots or something anyway. So yeah, yeah I and DT in the lounge watching live. He's watching it. He can watch it from the HP touchpad. Way to go. Oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, I want HP one. Touchpad. Way to go. Speaking of which, you see they're really getting a move along with the uh, Android port for that now. We just about got it working successfully. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. So, mm. Eric, you're still after one then? I'm still after one. Um, the only people in Australia that are selling them is Moby City. For how much? Um, so, well, they've, they've jacked the prices up, obviously. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. they know everyone saying, wants what, them. Now. They'll, what they're doing out. is they're buying them off eBay and then increasing their price and selling them again. Yeah. No, actually not. They've got, it. they've got an order direct from HP. they bought a 1,000 units from HP. Yeah, right. 1,000. Mm. Crazy, crazy. Well, speaking of buying stuff, I see uh, Dick Smith this week. They've got 10% off all Apple, or most of the Apple range, including the 2011 new range. Mm. So discounts applying to the new 2011 releases of MacBooks, iMacs, and Mac Minis. And uh, this is your first chance to get the latest hardware at less than the standard retail price. So they're uh, making money on that because Apple margins are very thin. Yeah, for, well, I for suppose. the retailers. So I was just going to say, like, would that would those prices then be undercutting from the Apple Store? Yeah, they'd be less in the Apple Store, but they but oh, less again wouldn't, wouldn't be making any money. But you say what? So unless they got so, some sort of deal going on, which no, they, they may have for a bit of a the same deal for everybody. Everyone gets ten percent margin, no no exception. Okay, so Garth, you've just bought a. This is why Garth is really here. He's just bought an Air, the same as your wife, uh, Eric. Well, yeah. the insurance company bought my wife's Air. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for the glass of wine that spilt on the last one. But well, nevertheless, yes. it is an Air. Nevertheless, all right. And uh, so, Garth, tell us about your. Where did you buy it from? From the Apple Store in yeah, Rabina. I, in Rabina, yeah. And yeah. Uh, full price. Standard price. Standard price. Now that I know that this ten percent <laughs> thing's happening, it's not as <laughs> not as not as uh, fuzzy feeling as gone away. I'm within fourteen days, <laughs> so I could always go back and. <laughs> well, that's right. Is that a is that an ironclad guarantee they do it for is. everything? It is. Yeah, I checked before. I, yeah. Ooh, there you go. I actually yeah, had a bit of a is, windfall. But you've got to be so careful because you go to Dick Smith and suddenly they don't have the configuration you've got. Because remember, yeah. they don't hold as much stock as Apple that's right. does. 
Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so tell us, uh, Garth, you were, how, how do you like it? You, what did you have before, a uh, Mac product? No, like this is the first Mac I've owned. Right, okay. I've used a lot of iOS, obviously, yep. and totally Windows other than that. Yep. So three so days in and I'm, okay, how do you do this? How do you do that? Can't do this, <laughs> can't do that. Oh, listen, you should, you, you're should. going to have to send in some questions to the head. He, I will. He, he'd, love I will. To, <laughs> he'd love to answer them. One, one, like the first interesting thing I came across was trying to get into the bank's website. Oh, yes, yep. Um, clicked on the login link every which way I could think to click on the login link with. Yeah. Nothing would happen. Yeah, okay. Brought up the contextual menu, copied link, pasted it into the, into the address bar, yep. straight in. Oh, nice. So, you, so you're working your way around. Working your way around, yeah. Yeah. And so beforehand you had a laptop before? Yeah. But it was a PC? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and or oh, Windows. I what browser say. are you using, Gar? On the Apple, on the Mac, on, on the, the Mac, um, Safari. I have. Yeah, you know, I find with Safari sometimes you um, download it from Apple again and reinstall it over the top of what you've got, and you'll right. probably fix a lot of those problems. Actually, that might okay. not be a bad idea because I know uh, I was just saying to Gar. With my mom's computer, the same, same, similar problem. You just you'd press on a, you press enter on a link, and nothing would happen. Hmm. Well, you'd, just to sh- you'd go to shut down the browser and it'd hang. Yep. <coughs> yeah, I well, I, so I just to, yeah. download it again and reinstalled it straight over the top of it. Look, I'll, I haven't played around. I'll get WebKit on and I'll get Chrome on there, but, you know, I've only had it for a couple of days, so, um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think you'll like it. I like the Mac Mini, although it's uh, it's you probably can't tinker as much as you can with the PCs and all that sort of stuff, but most, yeah. you know, it's just... Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. But, Eric, you it might have just answered worked. one of my questions, actually. I was saying the Garth before the show how um, the back end of the live stream, it's all flash-based, and the cursor, the mouse, the arrow kept disappearing, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, it must be, you know, Apple and Flash, you know, they're not very good um, bed buddies. So, yeah, so I'm going oh, to try that. I'm going to re-download Safari. Might even throw on Firefox and see if that problem goes away. Right. Now, just to sp- uh, while well, we're talking about Macs and a special... When you un- to uninstall a, a, a Mac program, um, all you've got to do is drag it from the applications folder into the bin, right? Yeah, yeah I that's heard it. that. It just seems bizarre coming from a Windows world, doesn't it? But <laughs> Yeah, it does. It, does. I, it took me a while to get used to it. But the trick is this. There's a free program you can just Google this called App Trap. Oh, yeah. Get that, install that first because what happens is when you drag it to the bin and you, then you empty your rubbish bin, it doesn't take all the library files and all the, all the mm. cache and all the stuff that's built up when you do that. But if you get App Trap, it deletes absolutely everything that's related to that application. Okay, right, right. And that's a free, a free app. You can just download it off, off, just Google it. Yep. And then you just go and uh, reinstall you know, Safari or whatever it is that you're getting rid of. And it'll be smooth. Yeah, nice, okay. nice. And uh, so, Garth, did you have any other questions, or you just, just no? As look, you come, as you look, come the, across them. Yeah, that's right. The one thing, the hardware's beautiful. That yeah. <laughs> no, it's lightning no. fast, though, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I got the um, 11 inch, but the four gig and 128. You know, four gig of RAM, 128, and it's, it's just yeah. yeah. Open it up, it's there, ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh, another Mac story that was that appeared through the week. Now, Will, you, I, I noticed that you had this story on your Facebook page. I don't know if you had it in the notes for tonight. Uh, re, the the wooden MacBook. Uh, yeah. Did you want to talk <laughs> about that? Uh, <clears throat> I can do that. Yep. The uh, I'm just trying to quickly bring the story up, but basically, a woman was approached in a car park okay you remember a few years ago they had these white van schemes yeah i, I bought where... heaps of stuff out of them they were great <laughs> yeah i mean i've never had a problem either well my <laughs> I first bought stereo equipment and everything off i them. know my my first encounter was yeah just driving along the highway the guys in the white... i think that's called dealing in stolen property no, he told me it wasn't. No. He, he told me it was Ridgy. He said it was Ridgy, did you? What are you? Oh, yeah, then I yeah, well, then right. to be. If he told you it was Ridgy, he must, he must be on the, on the up and up. Yeah, well, he, he did show me his Blockbuster video card, so come on. <laughs> <laughs> he showed you his ID. That's what right. did I have on? But, Joe um, Bomb's thing. Well, this was ages ago, but he was selling speakers and everything, and uh, yeah, they just put, they were driving alongside me and yelled out to me. So, do you want to buy some speakers? <laughs> And I, and I just went, the second time I was used to it, so the, the second time they yelled out to me, I just went, pull over, <laughs> like this, you know, just give him the big pull over finger. And so he, he, we looked in the back of the, the van and I said, he goes, 400. I went, mate, come on. I know, I know you got a better <laughs> discount. 
How about 300? He went, yeah, righto. I said, you got any amps in there? He goes, might have up the back. And I said, all right, 200. <laughs> he goes, yeah, righto. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I decked right out. It was good. But, yeah, yeah. sorry, Will. Sorry, continue. We got a, yeah, sorry. We got a uh, full 5.1 stereo from it. But um, <laughs> a similar sort of thing in the States. Basically, a according to the Sheriff's Office in Spartanburg County, South Carolina, um, and by the way, Glenn, can you queue up the pictures because they're priceless? I've just thrown the link in the uh, Hangout chat. Um, you get all in for this. Swear to God. Ooh. And um, Mrs. McDowell was picking up food at McDonald's on Monday night when two men approached her in the parking lot. After showing her new iPad, the police report said they told Mrs. McDowell they had bought the tablet computers in bulk and were selling them for $300 US. Mrs. McDowell evidently jumped on the chance to snag um, an iPad, but explained that Shani had 180. The men decided to sell her one for 180 anyway. So she did. handed them the money, and then she got the FedEx box containing the iPad. When she got home, well, she waited until she got home to, before she decided to open it, and when she opened it, the box contained a piece of wood painted black with an Apple logo. The so-called screen is filled with mock iPad, iPad icons for email, photos, and Safari and held down with black tape. The studious con man even included a Best Buy sales ticket. Well, you've you, you got, uh, you got to give them credit. They tried hard. Did they, they catch him? <laughs> oh, I don't, no. I don't know. But Apparently, according to Mrs. Uh, whatever her name was, Mrs. Al. Got ripped off. Um, the... They were driving a white van, a white <laughs> Impala with no they rims and no tint. Vans. No <laughs> rims? <laughs> How do they drive with no rims? <laughs> so, I, know, Will, I thought that was hard. <laughs> so, Will, what, what did you do with $180? Did you upgrade your computer? <laughs> well, so actually, with the conversion, it was closer to 200 So. <laughs> oh, right. Well, okay. Well, that's no Maccas for you that night. I'll get you another Pendo pad. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But have a look at it, though. Like, why, why wouldn't you... It's a piece of garbage. Yeah, but seriously, why, why, why wouldn't you just put a brick in the box? Why would you go to all the trouble of actually cutting out a little Apple logo, cutting out the oh, icons? Mate. There's no, no, no risk. No, 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 there's no reward for no toil. Nah, true. But <laughs> do, do you know what... Do well, you know, there is. She might have wanted to have a look in the box. It's okay, I guess, if it was dark. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, the woman now that it's now that this story has gone around the world, she want to be putting that up on eBay and at least get try and get something back. Oh, you well, would, wouldn't you? Like that. Of, Steve Jobs will buy it back off her. Jobsy, <laughs> Steve Jobs, you'll buy it back off yeah. her. Because yeah, it exactly. looks so much like the very first computer he built. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's made out of timber. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Some Definitely. bloke was selling a drawing of the um, HP touchpad for on eBay for some ridiculous amount for a while there, wasn't he? Oh, a drawing. Was a story about that? Oh, I wouldn't put. It, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> In the middle of the old the frenzy around getting the the touchpad, someone had a. We should have a new. We should have a new section. Just knobheads, we we'll call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Knobhead of the week. Well, actually, <laughs> bring the tool back. Bring the tool shed back. Yeah, but, I think uh, we might have to. Well, we'll put her in the tool shed. On that line is actually the top five um and i'm quickly rolling through my stories trying to find it there's actually the top five biggest ripoffs of i think it's only the last like three months right. um i'm just trying to find it we might have to come back to it cause the iphone 5 that was uh swiped and uh rip and sold as an iphone 4 the uh the boy in the balloon Oh, that was two years ago. All right. Well, anyway, well, while we're looking for more knobheads, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, well, and and speaking of knobs, uh, you see, Triple X web domain registration has begun. That's that's right. Remember, Mark used yeah. to go on about the he always wanted the Triple X, you know, dot Triple X web domain for pawns and all this sort of stuff. So anyway, yeah, uh, he never wanted to pay. <laughs> no, that's right. Companies and celebrities are being given the chance to protect their names from being. Porn hacked or porn jacked, good choice of words, isn't it? <laughs> Ahead of the launch of the dot uh, triple X web domain, uh, from today, brands can request to have their name blocked from use with the new suffix, which give which goes live next year. So, um, but why would you? Seriously, dot triple X. Who does? 
Uh, yeah, well, Will is saying, why would you? And I was just thinking, Disney dot triple X. I don't think Disney would really no, want no. to be associated. <laughs> well, no. no, but so you can't register um, major names without being affiliated with the company anyway. No, but They're I think it's more for uh, examples in this in this particular article. It's more like uh, politicians and stuff like that. So, um, mm. say so you can't go Julia Gillard dot triple X. No, and why not? Well, actually, why would you? Well, yeah, true. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but companies and individuals individuals that do not want their name associated with pornography will be able to pay a once off fee between uh, one hundred and fifty dollars and three hundred dollars, depending on which company they register with, to uh, to block that domain out. So you so you just obviously you just pay it up front, one off fee, and that blocks it. Uh, to ensure the registered sites do not harbour malware or present any other cyber security threats, which obviously comes hand in hand with the porn sites. Uh, the international someone said that they will be scanned daily on security from McAfee, uh, something that would make them safer to visit, blah, blah, blah. The websites will be overseen by the International Foundation for Online Responsibility. Well, there you go. What's, the, what's their little acronym? If or. If or. Um, and, and will be uh, fitted with an electronic label to allow parents to adjust the browser settings. Wow, wow, wow. After the... Mm. Uh, yeah, that'll work well. Yeah, that's right. Um, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. Yeah, tri- dot triple X. Finally a reality mark. Woohoo! I found this uh, this page I was looking forward to for the uh, the top five Nobs. worst. Well, actually, I think it's top ten. The best of the worst fakes and scams. <clears throat> and, of course, uh, that wooden iPad is the number five. Yeah. Um, just throw it up in the chat there. Yeah. Um, the next one across is basically a somebody thought they were buying a Samsung uh, 500 gig external hard drive, and right. basically from a reputable dealer in China. Oh yeah, um, there's heaps of them. <laughs> basically, what they got was um, a plastic case with Samsung written on it, and when he couldn't figure out why it wouldn't hold any more than 128 meg RAM. Uh, or 128 meg, he took it to a dealer and they cracked the case open and there's 128 meg flash drive inside <laughs> and two big nuts <laughs> to add the weight. <laughs> oh, no. But, like, I mean, why would you even bother putting the flash drive? Why would, why would you go to so much trouble? Why wouldn't you just well, put okay. a brick in there? They didn't because on the next one, somebody bought what they thought was like a one gig thumb drive and it didn't work, so they popped it open and there was literally just a plastic casing yeah. with the a USB port cable that somebody had cut the head off and shoved the cable oh, and hot glued it in. Jeez. <laughs> oh, what's that? What's number three? Now, and the next one is uh, basically somebody bought what they thought was a MacBook Pro, and it was actually purchased from a Best Buy in Texas, oh. and. When they opened the box, there was a brick wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> there you go. There's me brick. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Number number, and, uh, number two. And that was, yeah, that was the Best Buy one. Yeah. That was actually from Best Buy. And there's another one who bought a 14-year-old girl in Texas, again, from Best Buy, bought what she thought was an iPad, only to, back in 2007, only to open up and find it full of rocks. <laughs> there you go. Um, That's what you should be doing. You don't go to the what, trouble of making it half work. <laughs> what happened was it was actually. Oh, the, the next one is a uh, same sort of thing. It was a, a Nintendo DS. Um, what what she did actually, this girl, this lady bought Guitar Hero DS for a son, even though he didn't have a DS. She was going to play a prank on him, yeah. and then later on, give him the DS. You know. Yeah. Um, anyway, so she's handed him Guitar Hero, and then when he's gone to open the box with the DS in it, um, it was full of newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a lot of newspaper to make. Oh, yeah, DS, they don't weigh much, I suppose, do they? So what had actually happened, it was from Walmart. What had actually happened was they'd, somebody else had returned the DS, sealed it up, hmm. and the store never bothered to check it. <laughs> Back on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I think that used to be a bit of a scam over here, wasn't it? They, you'd buy, you'd buy something and take it back with different insides. So yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, stuff well, like I think that. It's probably the gr- the worst one out of a lot of them. There's a few others, but I think this is the worst. On Christmas Day in 2005, 
a boy from Hawaii opened an iPod box to find that it basically had, instead of an iPad, it had a piece of steak oh. inside. <laughs> now, I would have expected that from Texas. <laughs> Christmas Apparently what okay. happened was one of the Walmart employees would thought it'd be hilarious to take the uh, take the iPod out oh, yeah. and put a steak in a there. A bit of meat in there. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that, that's the top five knobheads for the last month. <laughs> the knobheads <laughs> are in the shed. All right, uh, Germany. Germany's, Germany's in the news. They've lifted the the ban of doom after 17 years. Mm. So a German ban on selling Doom to older teenagers has been lifted. Uh, the classic video game was put uh, was put on an index of controlled titles in 1994 as it was deemed likely to harm youth. So apparently uh, there's still one version of the game that remains on the index and hence blocked because it incorporates mm. two levels from Wolfenstein 3D yep. which has images of the Nazi symbols including SWAT stickers. Uh, restrictions yep. on Doom 2, Hell on Earth, have also been lifted. Oh, there you go. So, we'll yeah, doom. the only, the actual, that's been released, but they've just taken the, I think it was level 2 and level 3 from memory that had the um, the secret Wolf 3D levels in them. Yeah, oh, um, they were secret levels, were they? Yeah, you'd go through a secret door, and instead of ending level 2, you'd go into Wolf level 1. Right. And then when you finish that, they take you to Doom level three, and then if you did that, you could go to to Wolf level two. Right. Um, yeah. they were hidden levels, so yeah. they've actually just taken the hidden levels out of the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. A friend of mine from well, a guy I know, he became a friend. He came over here from Germany, and we we're actually playing Wolfenstein and Doom two, and he thought they were the best things in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I used to play Wolfenstein. I used to love it. Like this is this Wolfenstein on the Apple II. This is. I don't. I didn't play yeah, that new, new fang dang no one. No different on the now. Yeah, probably. Oh, there not. is a new Wolfenstein now. Yeah. Actually, it's funny how far. If you what was that ninety four Doom two was it? Oh Did God, it I don't know. Something like that. Um, but it's funny that the um, now you can play it in a PHP script on the net. Oh, okay. What are the graphics like? You know, fine. They're exactly the same as the original, you know, like... Oh, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right. I've got another story. No. Oh, no, but what we might do... Eric, have you got any stories before we, uh, we might... Uh, you know on? I disappeared for seven minutes? Oh, did you? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote it and everything. Yeah, <laughs> no. no idea I was gone. I did. I saw the empty chair. See, I've, got a, I've actually got a question. Oh, yes. For, for Drew Carey. Oh, well, he's coming on in a minute. So I, I can save it for that or yep. I can carry on with... Uh, I, don't, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't know if the head likes questions without notice. But, but I've got the answer. <laughs> oh, he likes them. Ones, then. <laughs> and I've got the answer. All right. So what we might do is, um, or did you want to do, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a story, audible, or ask the head? We'll, we'll pull him out of his little box. I don't uh, know, but I need a refill. All right. Yeah, well, let, let's, uh, do you want to do, do you want to Don't talk? procrastinate on that refill, Will. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do an audible, Eric? We can do an audible. All right. So audible.com. So if you don't know by now, Audible, you can listen to books. That's right. People will read them to you. Uh, you download them at, from audible.com. You can to sign up. You go to aussietechheads.com.au. Click on the link, on the banner link that's there, and uh, you get a 14-day free trial, which would include one free book. You download that. Have a bit of a listen. And every now and then, every week, we shall endeavour to give you a a, 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 a a uh, insight into what is possibly hot, hot, hot in the world of Audible.com. And Eric's the Audible dude. What do you? What, do you, what do you got, Audible dude? <laughs> All right, Audible dude has got. It's a book called. It's uh, written by Kieran Levis or Levi's, narrated by Timothy Bentnick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I should get normal names. Okay. I, I've got no idea. They're foreigners. All right, now I'll read you the, the – I'll tell you the title last. How's that for a turnaround? All right. I'll read the summary first. Okay. Then I'll grab. Winners and losers – oh, I just told you the grab of the book. Okay, it's called Winners. <laughs> <laughs> it started off with that. Yeah, good one. Good okay. work. Edit, edit point. 
We don't edit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've got the clap there. It's called Winners and Losers, Creators and Casualties of the Age of the Internet. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh. Mm. Winners and Losers tells the stories of some of the most innovative businesses of recent times explaining how a few succeeded in creating and dominating entirely new markets while so many others die in today's ferociously competitive online era. It is Sounds pretty right. Fer- yeah, it is. So, so it goes through not just what one person, but it goes through a number of people. It goes through a number of things. It goes through companies like IBM, Kodak, AOL, Apple, nice. Google, yep. Amazon, right. Nokia. Okay. That's a good one. What's the what's the, that? Where's my pencil? What's the name of that one? Winners and losers. So it's, in, it's in my show notes there. Oh, good. Uh, I've got a grab with everything on there in the picture. I've, oh, I did. I sent you the picture, didn't I? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, of okay. Mark. Okay. <laughs> of yeah, I'll, I'll I'll play a, a grab now. All right. So tell, tell me if the audio is okay on this. All right. Though nobody realised it. Even in 1997, eBay was benefiting from a combination of what economists call network effects and engineers' positive feedback loops. The more people who used it, the more attractive it became to others. It would continue to grow exponentially for years to come, like a giant snowball rolling down a mountain, gathering more and more buyers and sellers. By 1997, the total value of sales was on course for $100 million, and eBay's revenues were $4.3 million. Ten years later, total sales reached $53 billion, and eBay's share was $6 billion. That's uh, serious go. money, isn't it? In 97 as well. Yes, yes. Ten years. This book was written in 2007, released in 2009, why I don't know it took so long to release um, so that covers that 10 year period from the pretty much the start of the of the you know the online era of you know people come up with Amazon I think started in 95 mm-hmm. it, just as people were getting used to you know what's his online gig and all this sort of stuff yeah so yeah. It's that 10 year period and uh, it's very interesting and uh, go and read it go and listen to it go and get it so winners and losers, you can get that as your free book from uh, following the link and signing up from the link for audible.com from the aussietechheads.com.au webpage. Woo-hoo. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. What are we going to do? Garth, did you have anything uh, on your mind? or One any, thing any... I'll mention, yes. the, um, like I was saying before the show, coming over to Glenn's place tonight, um, pulled out the iPhone, pulled out Navigan. For those of you who don't know, I'm blind. Um, Never been here before. I don't know three, how you found it, Fanny. 3K can... walk. Yeah. <laughs> I could see and I still couldn't find the place. <laughs> <laughs> I'd got sat in there, but I still get lost. Worked like a charm. <laughs> I was I was really impressed. So the only only issue, though, was that we, we discovered, well, Garth discovered that they <laughs> didn't know the shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That took him a all... A cricket field, it took me all the way around, and, and we're not talking, you know, an extra few hundred metres around a cricket field. We're talking probably... Could have been a one-kilometre walk. So how long? Into a three-kilometre walk. So how long? How long did it take you in uh, in minutes? Thirty-five, I think. Oh, that's not too bad. Thirty-five is not too bad. Yeah. It takes me ten to to, to really use the shortcut. As I said, yeah. So a one k could have been. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you the shortcut. Yeah, but, but it was um, I was pretty impressed. So that yeah, it was Navigan. Yeah. The, okay. Um, yeah, because you I, can get it on the App Store. It ranges in price from about forty up to seventy, typically. I think. Yeah, because I said I was, I was speaking to Garth when he first got here, and I said I was I was, I was pleased that it got him here because my na- uh, nav man, the one for the car, it, for some reason doesn't recognise my address. Like, so, so say it or it won't show me up specifically. It'll I show know. the next door. Yeah, it's no, the next door yeah. person, you know. So, like my my street number doesn't Was come that, up. Doesn't come up because <coughs> no, you're squatting. I've been doing that a lot straight away. <laughs> I've been doing that a lot with navigators. I've used. Because I use one for work, I use it to get roughly to where I need to go, and then I flick up Street View on my phone and use that. Yeah. Mm. So this one, it'll it'll let you do you know set your your route profile from car to bicycle to truck, yep. bus. Oh, okay. Um, pedestrian or pedestrian with voice announcement. So yeah. Let's pick pedestrian voice announcement and. Yeah, good stuff. Not so, wrong. so and listeners, yes, I did apologise for not picking him up. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, <laughs> but I'm not I'm not a complete a hole. 
<laughs> but uh, circumstances no, were no, that, um, that my wife had the car with the only two car seats in it, so um, so I, I, I couldn't do it. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we can take you <laughs> make no, up for look, it. <laughs> and like I told Glenn, I wanted to try it out anyway. I yeah. could have I could have jumped a cab. It's two minutes. Wait, it would have cost two bucks, you know. Yeah. So, so that's all. Right. But I wanted to say let's let's give this give this a bell and so so um, yeah so furthering that uh, discussion so you use an iPad yeah yep and so how do you how do you work that can you give us an idea of how that works for like for you like um well that's the one good thing with i well one of the many good things with iOS is built right in straight out of the boxes that is the accessibility stuff right so there is. Some accessibility built in with navi- with uh, geez, what am I saying? The Android. Yep. But at this stage, it <laughs> strangely enough doesn't give you much access to the touch screen. Right. So if you want an Android phone, you've got to get one with a keyboard, basically. Yeah. So to use it with the voice. Because you were telling me once that the iPad, like you, when you turn it into what, accessibility mode or something, mm-hmm. it it you you can then use three fingers on the touch screen. So. Whenever you touch something on the screen, instead of it activating as as it would if you were, you know, just in the normal mode, yeah, it it says what you're touching. So if you keep your finger on that spot and then touch anywhere else on the screen, yeah, or take your finger off and double tap anywhere else, it'll activate as though you, you touched for the first time. Yeah, nice, nice. So. Yeah, so so you find your way around the iPad fairly well, really well. Well. Yes. It, yeah. <laughs> I use it all the time. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. So good work. Good there's, work. There's, you know, there's very variation from one app to another app as to how accessible it's going to be. How well. Hmm. Um, the other thing Apple have done really well is just make the API. If if developers follow the rules that Apple have put in place, just the standard development rules. Yeah. Most apps come out, you know, ninety five percent accessible without the developers having to do anything else. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, oh, oh, it blew me away because I, yeah, oh, yeah, it just that's great. That's great that Apple are so yeah adaptive and probably industry leading in that regard. That's great. Yeah, oh. yeah, so. yeah. It's great. All right, is it time? Is it time for the head? That's, this is the big question. Oh, it's never time. <laughs> or depending on your view, it's always time for a head. <laughs> well. <laughs> The Sometimes head. head comes whether you want it to or not, doesn't it? That's right. I can I can hear him running down the hallway. So um, so <laughs> with his pterodactyl arms, with his with his little flipper <laughs> arms. That's right. I can, I can hear <laughs> him. I can hear him. So um, all right. So while we get while we get ready for the head, Brad, actually, so you can hear the head coming. That's that's nice. Yeah, actually, here here he is. All right, Hello. focus on me. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This, the, the head is here to Hi. answer your questions. Now, I have a couple oh of questions. God. <laughs> I have a couple of questions tonight. You should call it who is Drew. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, people, <laughs> if you're watching on the video, I don't know, what are we, 33 minutes in, about halfway through I, the show, the head comes that, on. You know that saying, a head like a drop pie? Uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> Now I know what that looks like. <laughs> Head like a busted thong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, this is serious. This is serious. We've got some questions. Barry Unsworth. Okay, now the the first question. <laughs> Head. Like, what was he? A head like a knee? No, the human knee. That's right. <laughs> the human knee. Hello. Anyway, let's get let's get cracking. The heads on limited time. <laughs> Barry Unsworth. He was oh. he was he was known as the um the human knee. Or whatever Eric just said. Okay, so now let me let me see if I can find the first question here in my in my mountains of emails. Uh, Warren from Malula Bar. Hi, head. Love the head. My question is: when copying a directory that might be right protected, a dialog box comes up and asks uh, yes, no, yes to all, and all this sort of stuff. Uh, so what you do? Is you can uh, sometimes like you might be copying a file and it might say uh, oh you know like this is right protected do you want to do this to all of the right protected files and you say and you want to go no but there is no to all unless you go no 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 click on the no for a million files there is no no to all but there secretly is what you do to enable a no to all you just hold down your shift key while you click no so there you go now that's, that's work on yes as well. But there's a, there's a yes to all, most of the time. Yeah, the no, not on not on everything. Oh, Sometimes right. it, they won't let, like if it's a 
desktop dot INI, for example, it won't let you do yes to all. So. Oh yeah, I don't like those. It always stops the the copying process and annoys me. You can again. do the same thing though. Shift Y. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, well, that's that one. That was a nice. Quick. We've got a three three quick ones uh, this week. That now, was a good little tip, Ed. Uh, uh, thank you, Garth. Thank you very Hang much. Hang on a minute. That was a little good tip, Ed. Did you say? <laughs> <laughs> now, come on. We don't want to get too serious here. <laughs> okay. See, I've got long fingers, and that's I am the best piano player that you've ever heard. Be careful yeah, when you pick, when you're scratching your ear or your nose. I mean, that could be bad. It could, could be. be both at once. All right, now Westy, <laughs> Westy, <With the> same <laughs> thing. Westy from Nambour. <laughs> now, now the, the the segment head is getting a bit carried out. Too much laughter. Head's not happy. Okay, Westy from Nambour. <laughs> Head, I'm annoyed with the user account access control or whatever it is called. How can I turn this off? Because I hate it. Well, it's harsh words, Westy. You shouldn't hate anything. I'll but, answer that very quickly. Yes. Get back. Yeah. Well, you could. Well, that's the mm. answer one. Or answer, that's one answer. Or answer two. They're like French fries. Or answer two is click the Windows <laughs> button in the bottom left hand corner. Click Control Panel. If you're using the default view, click on User Accounts. So. Control, you, you go control panel, user accounts, and then there will be, you go to the user account you, you want or there'll be a little section down there that'll says change the user account control settings, click continue, put your admin password in and click, uh, up, use the scaler, the, the, the slider button to determine which security you require or just turn it all off and click OK and restart the computer and the UAC should be gone. Doesn't it give you an option every time the UAC comes up to say one of the options is change when you when you see these notifications too? Uh, change when you. S so I think every time Only the UAC comes up, one, yes, no, and one of them is change when you see this. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, only for some things it does something that. Something like that. Oh. Um, but just bear in mind, we should mention that's fair for a reason. The UAC is up there with firewalls and forest scanners. If you don't know what you're doing, don't play with it. It's for people who, like me, who it just irritates and always gets in the way, I'll get rid of it. But just bear in mind that you do run the risk of allowing uh, code injection and, and PHP scripting and things like that to take over if you're not running it. So if you are going to disable it, make sure you're aware of the risks that's involved in doing that. But as I said, for me, the first thing I do when I install Windows is get rid of it. So Yeah, I... Yeah. Uh, the the, oh, yeah. the the head recommends you keep it because <laughs> for, for security I keep it on I keep it on all the time I don't mind typing the password in every now and then all right Annabelle from Marujidor hello guys and hello head I'm a school teacher and do a lot of presentations using PowerPoint I would like to insert images captured from my screen how can I do this please help as this would help me greatly in the quality of my presentations P.S. I have Windows Seven and I love your flippers oh thank you <laughs> that's good <laughs> okay. Now, two ways you can you can do insert the fo insert the images from the screen. Uh, you should be able to hit the print screen button and then flick to the flick to probably paint or something and then crop out. You know, insert, paste the paste the uh, paste from the clipboard into the paint. Crop it out. That's the hard way. I'll tell you an easy way. Easy way. Go to the start button in the search box there. Type snipping tool. This little program will load up. This will load the snipping tool program contained within the Windows 7 and you can select the image you want from the screen just by dragging the square, you know, the, the square box around the image and then you'll be able to save it as a JPEG. And then you just insert it into your PowerPoint. So there you go. A couple of good tips there. Thank you, Annabelle, for your for your email. And a couple of good tips. Thanks for everyone for emailing in. I picked the I picked the three mm -hmm. of the three of the best ones each week, or the quickest so we can uh, sort them out. All right. That's it from The Head. He'll be back next week. Send The Head some questions via Twitter. You can follow The Head at, 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 at Ask The Head or you can send him an email, askthehead at aussietechheads.com.au. Right. Do you want to get my... Do you want my... Do you want my question? Oh, and yes. Oh, not? sorry, 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 Eric. Yes. What, what, oh, what's that's your all right, head boy. I got so much, you know. so much going on. I just, I just, you know, I can't, I, you know, I got to concentrate now. Okay. So go, Eric. Go. Right. Now the question was asked that. Um, with regards to backups, things a lot of places like Carbonite, for example, only back up your internal drive, which is a bit of a pain. Oh, yeah. And it's, especially if you start running out of uh, drive space, you want to attach an external drive. Yep. Are there any cloud backup places that um, will back up your external drive as well? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked me that question because there are. 
Now there yes. is there is a, there is a good one which is quite affordable as far yeah. as I believe, as far as far as I'm led to believe, you might say. Now I do, it's just not coming to to the my mind at the moment, but I, I can I'll get it here in a second. There's, the one that I use regularly is called Backblaze. That's good. Good. Um, I was going to ask you about that, Will, because that it, was the one I was going to go with. So yeah, like um, I've been using it for. I've been using it for probably a month and a half now. Yeah. Um, it's the way I buy it. I think it's six bucks a month if you pay monthly, yeah, like I do, or it works out as like three dollars a month if you buy it yearly. Right. Um, it's unlimited data. It's limited to one computer in the in in that basic package, but yeah. it does do it does do external drives. Any drive connected to that computer, and right. there is actually a bit of a hack. That's not a hundred percent reliable. It's a little bit flaky. That actually lets you back up network drives. Okay. Um, well, at this moment, well. network drives a problem. Not really worried about. But yeah, because yeah, for basically for my iMac, it was bought with a five hundred gig drive, and I'm down to eighty. Yep. And it's going to run <laughs> out very. Soon. There's a lot of recordings are on there, blah blah blah, pictures, etc. Yep. So I want to move some data onto the external drive, but then the external drive wasn't going to be backed up anywhere because. Yep. But especially not by Carbonite because mm. I only do one drive no. at a time. So I'm thinking of actually cancelling um, my Carbonite subscription on this Mac and going to Backblaze so it does both drives. So and, yeah, yeah, and one thing Carbonite does as well, which they don't tell you about, is and it doesn't happen to everybody, but I'm, I know people it does happen to. The more you back up, the slower it is they throttle your uploading. Right, um, right. Whereas I haven't noticed I that haven't with Backblaze. Noticed that. I haven't noticed that. Backblaze no. has a couple other features as well. It's got a couple other security features. It's got a Find My PC. So if your computer gets stolen, you can log into your Backblaze account. And then when somebody starts it up and Backblaze starts up, it'll actually grab the IP address of the network it's attached to. Right. Um, and but you yeah, can lock down. Carbon, I've got 302 gigabytes backed up to Carbonite. Right yeah, now. okay. Now, the... the yeah. Yeah, there is another one, but every, oh, here it comes. Now, there's another one called Crash Plan. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. Have you guys Crash heard Plan? Of yeah. I've heard yep. of Crash Plan. I've heard of it. I've never used it. it so. Okay. I think that's the one I was thinking about. There was, look, I just went to um, to have a look on my Skype because someone sent me a Skype with a good one that I was thinking of using, and it was about $3 a month. And I'm pretty sure it did network drives. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it could have been Crash Plan. So have a, have a look at crash, CrashPlan.com. That's another one. But there are, look... There's quite a few of them. Um, Backblaze. Yeah, I've, I've got, got, got a Another one. External drive. Hang on a minute. Yes, there's a local backup option and to backup. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'll tell you. There's a link. It's on. If you go to Wikipedia and you actually type in comparison of online backup services, there's a grid of every, pretty much every cloud backup service on there and it's got a grid of what they offer how much and everything oh nice nice yeah so go to wikipedia.org comparison of online backup services there you go mm. or just google that and you'll get straight there good stuff and don't, don't yes. forget too for just small amounts and copying stuff around you've got things like dropbox and uh what's the windows Walla. one um what was it garth there's one called walla walla oh well, that's another one walla. Yeah. yeah dropbox like oh yes yep Good stuff, good stuff. Now, um, okay, so unfortunately the head had to go while he was talking about that. He's, he's, got a, he's got a few more numbers to crunch. and uh, So we'll move on. So has anyone got any other stories to go on with? Or do you want me to pick one out? Um, well, one just quickly since we're talking about, um, since we're talking about Max a fair bit, or Apple, um, this would apply to Android as well. It just happens to be used on iPhone, but there was a military transport aircraft um, with 17 people on board went missing near Robinson, near Robinson Crusoe in Chile. The relatives of, of one of the crash victims logged on to find my iPhone and were able to isolate the coordinates of the last known whereabouts of the phone before it crashed. Yeah, of the, okay. um, yeah of the phone before the plane crashed. Yeah, right. Oh, so, yeah. thanks to something like that, it used the internal GPS and everything like that in the phone to, mm. and because of that they were, be able, they were able to find this plane that they didn't actually know where it was. Now, yeah, that, that's pretty good. That's that's the good use of the technology. Now, MBN, do you want an MBN story? That's, uh, yes, please. 
Okay, so MBN. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a that's a good story. MBN uh, contracts awarded uh, out in Western Australia and in Victoria. So obviously that's why they haven't been going on in Western Australia because no one was uh, no one was up for it yet. No one had won the tender. But, so, but the question I must ask, and because yes. um, I like being controversial, as you know. Yes. But not necessarily controversial. But you got to ask the question, and if I get a good answer, then I'll I'll eat humble pie. Mm. Um, now, Kevin07 announced the MBN in 2007, yeah. and that's pretty much why he was voted in. Would that be correct? Uh, yes, it yes. And, would, and you've got to give him some time to get things moving. So you think, okay, let's give him 18 months to get things up and running. You've got to get staffing. You've got to get lawyers involved. You know, whatever, 18 months. It's a long yeah. time. Fair enough. So that lead get, takes you to the middle of 2008. Why is it they're just awarding contracts now nearly towards the end of 2011. How freaking useless are these people? Yeah, look, I don't know the answer to that. I know, well, I'd be interested to, I, look, I, there's a lot of obstacles like Telstra and using their ducks and, and all this sort of, their, their, what are your, their little hidey holes and all that sort of stuff. But, like, I mean, how, I'd, I'd be interested to find out how long it, say, it took the Snowy Mountain River scheme to get up and running because that was a fairly big project. And uh, so, but anyway. Uh, well, look how long it took them to run a pipeline across Queensland. I mean, that took them five years or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, water pipe. Uh, Western Australia Telecommunications and Utilities Builder and Manager Service Stream Limited said that its Synthio joint venture had secured a contract worth at least $174 million with MBN uh, for the rollout of WA's Passive Fibre Network. So the, apparently the contract is for two years, worth up to $174 million, with an option of further two years, bringing the total potential value to $484 million. There's also Victoria Transfield Services. Yes? You go ahead too, please. Oh, said it had signed a minimum two-year, $133 million contract to design and build the fibre optic network to run Victoria's MBN. Oh, now it's Victoria's MBN. I thought it was Australia's. Uh, the contract included blah, 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 blah. So anyway, work is due to start in October. But... It's just so slow. It's just so slow. But we've covered all that. We know it's slow. We know that, that they roll out pinpricks at a towns at a time, and um, yeah, it, what there's. Oh. What I know about the Snowy Mountain scheme. Yeah. It uh, consists of sixteen dams, seven power stations, a pumping station, two hundred and twenty-five kilometres of tunnels, pipelines, and aqueduct, and was constructed between nineteen forty-nine and nineteen seventy-four. Well, that's a fair way. That's a fair time frame. I, so yeah, but remember, the technology in 1949 was not what we've got now. No. Yeah, but but I suppose, <laughs> like, um, like uh, what was I going to say? Like, the, the, the time frame back then, I suppose, that, that one of the factors would have been, like, resumption of properties and all this sort of stuff. Like, you've got to get people... Remember, too, the, the, the terrain that they were in was quite, heck, was quite, you know... Yeah. Oh, yes, yep. But anyway, no matter where you come from, it's going to take a while, so hopefully they can pull their finger out. Let's oh, look, I, I, the bill, I've, got no, I've got no concern about the build. I don't expect the build to, to, to take five minutes, but why has it taken so long to start the build? It's been four years. Yeah, 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 I know. Like, look, and they, then, like you said a few weeks ago, instead of starting at multiple points and running in conjunction with one another, yeah. they're going step by step, one foot in front of the other. Now, has most of Sydney got the Foxtel cable? Most of the the uh, most HFC of most cable, of most of it does, I think. Oh, okay, so so it'd be interesting to also find out how long it say it took to uh, to to map Sydney out with cable. You know what I'll I mean? Like, but anyway, well, while Eric's off and uh, doing that, let's uh, let's go and do another story. Oh, Will, do you have anything else? Or I've got one more to go. Before. There's there's one story that is actually quite well. I find be really cool. Um, I want this on my. I want to buy a Tom Tom just so I can have this. Yeah. <laughs> the outspoken Top Gear presenter and the London Sunday Times columnist Jeremy Clarkson has been recruited by TomTom Tom to provide the voice for its latest gadget. Uh, instead of the usual instructions, do a U-turn where possible, Clarkson will tell him drives in no uncertain terms to execute a handbrake turn when safe to do so. <laughs> um, there's not... also a tone of voice I use when ordering people to do things. So I, I said... <laughs> I said, left, 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 I said. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't tell people to chuck, chuck handbrakes <laughs> as they're going down the freeway. Well, yeah, you can. Because well, currently TomTom Tom offer um, Ozzy Osbourne, Snoop Dogg and Sir Roger Moore. Um, and there's Homer Simpson and a few other ones on TomTom. Tom. 
And so far, seen... Garmin has Yoda, Darth Vader. Yeah. yeah. And sorry, Garth, what was that? <laughs> I was going to say, I believe they're soon getting into insurance as well. Insurance? Mm. What, what do you mean? <laughs> well, for all the handbrake <laughs> oh, that people okay. chucked in. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm sitting sorry, down. Sorry, I was a bit, yeah. a bit late to, the, to that, so. Yeah, Lost. no, that's, that's right. But interesting enough, like, I've got a nav man and they don't do voices. Well, you can't download them. Well, the, the old ones don't. The, the new ones do. Oh, okay. Fair enough, then. Yeah, I've got a nav. What have I got? A Garmin movie in the truck. It's, like, four years old, so the maps are useless, but hmm. it doesn't do voices, really. It's like if it tells you to go in the right direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. Now, this my last story for this evening or for this show. Individual individuality drive and three D tech make firms go bespoke. Now, website websites of firms like Converse, Nike, and Keds. Now, they're offering a chance for you, the customer, to design your own product, and then. Uh, they will make it and then it will be shipped to you. So you would have an original, like say a Nike shoe, you would have an original uh, shoe that no one else in the world has got because you designed it. So just with a few clicks, you know, you change it from red to yellow or blah, 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 blah. Um, so how, I thought, how much are you charging for this? Oh, well, each mm. site would be different. And I, and look, to tell, honestly, I didn't actually see if it was available in Australia. It's probably, it's just in the UK. The story's from the UK. So, but I mean like... <laughs> It'll be- it, it's something be that one can't of those be rolled out nationally. Programs for the rich people like that. Uh, what was it the Bling app for iPhone, which was ninety nine dollars just for this one, or nine hundred ninety nine dollars just to have yeah. the app? Didn't oh do anything. yeah, yeah. It's just for sake of having. Well, as the story goes from the BBC, that they will cost little more than those from the regular in store collection. Hmm. So apparently, like you know, all the young people, they're all trying to be different, you know putting bits of metal in their face and in their ears and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so, like, everyone's striving to be different. Well, here's your chance to get different uh, apparel. So, yeah, that's interesting. But, but uh, yeah, by everybody being different, does that make them the same? No. They're, but no. they're all the same because they're different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Will. Go on. All right. All right. <laughs> what, what else have we got going? Anything else, um, Will, Eric? Before we, yeah. uh, uh, have well, to be honest, it was a rather slow news week. It thing. was very slow. Did very slow. Eric, you did you have a Yahoo story or something? I had a, I had a, just quick quick grabs. Uh, Tony Abbott rejects the claim that he endorsed the MBN. So oh, that's one. He rejects it. I thought. I thought he. You know, he said that they were accusing. They were saying, "But you, you, you know, you agreed to it in the first place." And he said, oh, "No, I didn't." Right, so right. That's what. That's the. That's the latest <laughs> NBN story. What a joke. Yeah. All right. Facebook doubles first half revenue to one point five billion. Mm. Yeah. Right. One point five. No one knows what profit. That's revenue. That's top line, not bottom line. Yep. So, but no one knows what their bottom line is because it's a private company. They don't have to release that. Um, so, who knows what their. Uh, Real results are. Yeah, well, we can all and go to hell as far as they're concerned. Yep. Yahoo fires CEO Carol Bartz. Yeah. Now, what was going on with that? I I saw the story and she let her staff know over a text message or something. I know. He, she sent an email. Thirteen thousand employees. Yeah, and said, right. I have just been sacked over the phone by the chairman. A nice work with you. Blah 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 blah. Carol. Few lines down, sent from my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so she's well. Yeah, I wonder what she did wrong. But anyway, what she did, she's useless. Oh, okay. She's, she's done absolutely nothing. Yep. Well, fair enough. She's sacked. six six months before her contract ended. They said, you know what, you've done nothing. Yeah, we can't we can't wait another six months. Get out. No, wasn't it. isn't she? Um. Managing another company at the moment as well, or they want her no. to manage another company? No, no one's going to want her to manage anything after this. Yeah, not now. She's what's she? Oh no, that's right. She she came from somewhere else to there, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah or some something called Autodesk or something. She knew nothing about mm. business, yeah. new media. No, nothing about it at all. How long and ago did she join? About two well, years, wasn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Shares went up. Nearly a dollar when they when the market found out she'd been fired. Yeah, that's well, how that's how much confidence well, the market had. Go down anymore? No, but they were just so happy she'd gone. Woohoo! Let's buy some Yahoo. 
Yeah, well, 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 Peter Peters probably won't talk to her. All right, that's the that's end right. of the show. <laughs> And, well, he didn't tell you he was a good sort. Oh, yeah, well, you can work that one out for yourselves. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's the you end watch, of the... If you listen to Chewing the Fat or watch Chewing the Fat up on the Secret Hub network, then that, you'll know what that means. That's right. The uh, Chewing the Fat is next live at .thesecrethub.com where you can download uh, Aussie Tech Ads or Chewing the Fat from iTunes. Chewing the Fat also on the Secret Hub YouTube account in full or in full on iTunes video as well. Now, uh, TBT still Tuesday nights, Will. That's going strong. Oh, where's Will? Yeah, yeah. There we we had a bit of a break last week because everybody was unavailable, but we're back again this week and hopefully get those up on the uh, – or TBT up on the weekend. And there's also the Android show, which has its alpha up on YouTube and the Secret Hub. Um, well, for the Secret Hub, it's on there as well. Um so hopefully we can get another beta going next week. All right, sounds good. And that's Tuesday nights from around seven ish, seven thirty ish, something. Yeah, like we that. generally start broadcasting about seven on live.secrethub.com. Usually start about seven thirty. And also, uh, no tech webcast replay tonight before the show. We had instead Tech AU from uh, TechAU.tv, passionate tech enthusiast, Australian podcast. So I hope you enjoyed that before the show. Uh, we might uh, we might g- give the Tech AU more of a run edge episode that he's put out. I think he only does about one a month. Um, obviously, it's a video cast, so it's a lot of work involved, and it does a smicko job too. Jace, good on you. That's very. It's a very good video. Mm. All right, uh, Garth. Right. Did you want to plug anything? Party. Fighting words on the Nike, eight hundred dollars for the sneaker. Oh, there you go. Oh, a little bit more the BBC. Cheap at the price. Come on. Yes. I'll have two. Or is that for one or for two? You get both. Sides. Yeah, that's for that's for one foot. That's no, no, it's for for a pair. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, you go. You, you ring up and you go. Um, how much? Are, or you get on the how much are those? And they go eight hundred. And you went right. And she goes, yeah, that's it. You only get the right one. And eight hundred for the yeah. left. <laughs> All right, Garth. You got Cross the. You. You, no, nothing to plug. There. Nothing to plug. Nothing to plug. Nothing to plug there. All right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, thanks to uh, yeah, Tech Webcast will be back before the show next week. Thanks to everyone. You don't forget live dot the dot com, YouTube slash dot com slash Aussie. No, YouTube dot com slash the Secret Hub. And uh, yeah, fi- if if look as long as you get us, that's the main thing. Find us. Find us anywhere. Boxy, wherever you are, just find us. All right. That's it for now. Stay tuned. Uh, chewing the fat up next live. See you next week. Ta-da. Bye for now. Bye.